We purchased our school bus last year and we spent that first winter doing the conversion with no heat whatsoever. So when Madero reached out to me and was like, hey, would you like to test one of our suitcase style diesel heaters? I was like, yeah, I think I have the perfect use case for it. See, the whole point of this unit is simplicity. No permanent installation, no fuel lines to run, no really holes to drill if you don't want to. You could honestly set this thing on the floor, run the exhaust out the window, and you have heat. I'm choosing to run the exhaust out this hole in the side of the bus. It's where the wiring for one of the blinkers used to be, and I'm going to be replacing that blinker in the spring. I just use one of the provided hose clamps to hold the muffler in the hole so it can't pull back in. You see, I knew we had a winter storm on the way, and I wanted to get this heater installed, set up, and ready, and let the temperature drop overnight to really see if this heater struggled with a severe cold start in the morning. I was excited to see what Old Man Winter had in store for us, and he did not let me down. We didn't get a whole lot of snow, but the temperature did plummet to about 15 degrees Fahrenheit overnight. By the time I got my slippers on and ran outside, it was about 18.7 degrees. I was really curious to see if this heater would fire up being well below freezing. I noticed no steam, no smoke, no rich fuel smell uh, coming out of the exhaust, even with this severe cold start. One of the best features of this unit is got to be the display. It shows you a wealth of information like burner temperature, your setting, your current altitude, and yes, this heater has automatic altitude adjustment. Plus it has a carbon monoxide detector. That is huge if you're gonna run this in an enclosed space and you wanna ensure that you are safe. So I set the heater to max through a digital thermometer in the bus and went inside to warm up. We'll leave it for an hour and see how it uh, responds. Now keep in mind, the bus has zero insulation except for the floor. The walls and the ceiling are bare steel. And in an hour, it managed to raise the temperature to 45 degrees Fahrenheit. The case of the heater actually remains surprisingly cool while the combustion chamber itself reaches 230 degrees Fahrenheit. The fan's fairly powerful. This is running about 20 meters a second. and outlet temperatures giving the current environment is about 230 degrees Fahrenheit. This unit is actually surprisingly quiet. It is described as having a noiseless fuel pump and while the fuel pump does tick, once the unit is primed and running, the fuel pump is actually barely noticeable. Now let's see what you get in the box. It's actually packed really well. I like the manual, it's in multi, uh, multiple languages and it's color and it describes pretty much everything you need to know. I've heard people mention that these units are to be installed outside of your vehicle and then have the heat plumbed in. I did not see that mentioned anywhere in the manual. Right off the bat, I did see some casting flaws. Not a huge deal, but just sort of uh, something to note. It's called the M5S Ultra, and it has this exhaust bracket already installed to get the exhaust up off the floor so you don't burn your floor. That is a feature some other heaters I've seen do not have. It comes with this Y valve, so you could in theory plumb your exhaust through various locations in your space. Lots of hose clamps for your heat tubes, clamps for your exhaust, and a fuel filter. And then there's your AC adapter. Nice little muffler. And this is a mounting bracket. This is an extension cord for the control panel. You can actually pull the control panel out and mount it remotely away from the unit to get more temperature control over your room because I believe that is where the temperature is measured, the actual control panel. A section of fairly rigid exhaust tubing. There's your wiring loom and then your main heat distribution pipes. The large pipe comes out of the heater and goes to the Y. The small brown pipes split off the Y and go to your various uh, locations where you want heat. Now let's do some bench top tests. I wanted to change things up and run this heater off of a 12 volt supply with a BMS that can give me power draw. So I'll have two different ways to measure the power consumption of this unit. 
this unit does have an internal fuse, so I did not run a fuse in line from the battery to the unit because it's already got one installed. I realized after I connected the battery that I need an accurate way to measure the fuel. So I'm gonna need to pull this side cover off and connect my own fuel line, my own little fuel container, so I can measure the fuel consumption over a 30 minute run. And I use this fuel filter to allow me to add a length of fuel hose to the heater and get me back to my, uh, my fuel flask. And it took a little while to run the heater and get all the air bubbles out of the fuel filter. So I use a gram scale and a 500 milliliter flask. And the initial measurement was 775 grams of fuel. And I just started the test. I figure I'll have it run on high and then come back and measure the fuel consumption. And that'll give us an idea of what it consumes over a period of 24 hours on high. My clamp meter shows about 4.4 amps on average while the battery BMS is indicating 3.9, 3.8 amps. In an effort to elevate my testing protocols, I purchased a carbon monoxide detector, and I was baffled for the longest time. No matter what I did, I could not get this unit to indicate any carbon monoxide coming off this heater. And there we go, 30 minute test over. The ending weight was 587.6 grams of fuel. So this heater consumed 187.4 grams of fuel in a 30 minute run on high. That's full tilt, no brakes. So in one hour, it will consume 0.44 liters or 0.11 gallons. To give you a, that's in one hour, to give you a better idea, in 24 hours, if you ran this 24 hours nonstop, this will consume 10.56, roughly 10.6 liters of fuel per day. That equates to 2.79 or 2.8 gallons. So 2.8 gallons in a 24-hour period on high without stopping, or about 10.6 liters per day. That's your fuel consumption. That's respectable. And there's 10 different power settings. And you can also set, you can have it automatically, you can set a temperature that you want to maintain and it will ramp up and ramp down to maintain that temperature. The controls on this unit are very nice, specifically the Wi-Fi app. The Wi-Fi app on this is honestly, it's just, it's beautiful in my opinion because it gives you burner temperature, it gives you your set point, it gives you altitude, it gives you voltage, it gives you fan speeds, it allows you to set manual temperature or automatic temperature. It's a very full featured Wi-Fi app. I quite enjoy that. So the controls, the controls, the Wi-Fi app and the safety of the carbon monoxide detector, those are big features in my book. And one of the reasons why I wanted to test this unit now, remember when I mentioned that I wasn't sure if my carbon monoxide detector was working? I took it out, and I have an old pickup truck, and on the same day I tested this, I, I mounted the, the detector behind my pickup truck and did a cold start on it. And as you can clearly see, the detector is working. This unit just burns very efficiently to the point of where I never detected any carbon monoxide through three different various runs in three different positions. I never detected a single measurable amount of carbon monoxide come out of this exhaust. It's nice to know that it has a carbon monoxide detector built in, but I, it runs very clean in the beginning. I'm, I'm very impressed. Now let's, uh, let's tear into this thing and see what's under the hood. The external panels are really easy to come off. They're just Phillips head screws and they, uh, they come off quite easily. Removing all of the screws around the perimeter allows you to take the end caps off. Uh, one end cap is just there for the sight glass and to support the outlet of the heater. And the other, the rear end cap, actually has uh, your connections for your 120 volt in the US and your 12 and 24 volt. And there is your inline fuse. Now this connection here allows you to add the extender that comes in the kit and you can actually remove the control panel and mount it elsewhere. And it does come with adhesive to mount that control panel remotely. 
Now inside this outer shell, you have pretty much a bog standard eight kilowatt diesel heater that we've seen numerous, numerous times. I sped through the breakdown here because you've seen one eight kilowatt, you've kind of seen them all. I wanted to check to see how this burn chamber looked. Before this teardown, I ran this heater, I'm gonna say 10 hours total, trying to really get a feel for how it behaved, hiccups and stuff. I wanted to see if we accumulate any soot in the burn chamber or the heat exchanger. My only critique of the heat exchanger is that there's no heat pickup fins in the very end of the heat exchanger. That's an area you can get a little more out of one if you cast those fins in the very back but it's a clean casting on the inside. The outside leaves a little to be desired, but I detected zero soot on the burn chamber or the ex heat exchanger at all. That is really, um, it's really a clean burning heater. Full transparency, Maduro sent me this heater to test and evaluate, but no money has exchanged hands. They do not get approval uh, for this video. They do not control what I say. This is my opinion. I really honestly feel like this is a well-built little heater. For a portable solution, I love it. It has served me very well over the four or five days I have used it. And I'm talking about using it four to eight hours a day, really trying to cycle through it and see what it does. I love the controls. I love the Wi-Fi app. It burns really clean. I don't know if I would install this permanently in the bus. The thing that bothers me is the exhaust, the routing of the exhaust. If you have that exhaust come out in your finished space, it's very hot. It could in theory cause a fire. I would much rather have the exhaust penetrate the floor and come out in a place that is fire resistant. I'm not saying this couldn't be permanently mounted. I just don't think that's what I would do. Now I did, I've read some online comments that say that this type of heater is to be mounted externally and to have the heat plumbed into your living space with that ductwork. Now I read the manual. It says nothing about needing to mount this permanently outside. You can do that, but allowing the heater to draw in your pre-warmed air in your living space only makes the heater more efficient. If this heater is having to draw super cold air from outside, heat it with one pass and then bring it into your room, you're kind of giving it a bigger job to do. It, uh, if it can already be in your space and draw air from your living space, it has a much easier time maintaining the temperature. So just think about that. If, if you think this would fit your needs, I have some links in the description where you can find out more information about this heater. Uh, there is some discount codes down there if you want to use them. It does support the channel. Like I said, um, Madero sent me this to test. They're not paying me for this review. I think it's a solid heater. I'm pleased with it, and I'm going to use it all winter in the bus. So, yeah. I hope you like this. My name's Jason. If you have any questions, let me know. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.